Gotta get herself a little 3D here. Gonna pop the blue. Woo! That's good. Okay. What is going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. So today's video is gonna be a little bit of a tutorial. It's a little hack that I picked up just through the years and I'm calling it how to make 1080p footage look 4K. It's pretty simple and straight to the point, but I don't think everyone knows about it, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. So let's jump right into it. Fun fact I just wanna add in here. So every single video that you guys have watched of mine so far on YouTube is available for you to watch in 4K. So if you hit that little cog wheel on a YouTube video, you can change the different quality settings. Um, if you guys look back at any of my past videos, they are all available in 4K. Well, fun fact, I actually haven't shot a single video in 4K. Um, actually, some of the clips that you guys have seen are actually in 720. So this tutorial is gonna show you exactly how I do that how to get the most out of your 1080p footage, and how to get that little 4K to pop up next to your cogwheel on your YouTube videos. So you might be asking, Johnny, why do you have 1080p footage? Why aren't you shooting in 4K? Or why are you not always having 4K footage? Well, there's a couple reasons why you might not have 4K footage to work with. One is pretty easy. You might not have a camera that can actually shoot in 4K, or like my camera, the 4K has a big crop on it, so I prefer to just shoot 1080p. Second of all, when you are actually filming, shooting in 4K takes up a lot of storage space. You will fill up your memory cards a lot quicker when it comes time to archive all that footage. 4K just takes up a lot more room on your hard drives and everything like that. And then number three, when it's time to edit, even if you have a beast of a computer, editing 4K video is gonna be slower, um, especially when you get a lot of layers and presets, LUTs, looks, effects in there. Even if you have an awesome computer, your render times are gonna be slower. It's just a four fact. So editing 1080p footage in a 1080p timeline is gonna be a whole lot quicker. All right, so let's jump right into it. We are firing up Premiere Pro right here. All right guys, so once we have Premiere Pro open, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up to file, we're gonna create a new sequence. We want a 1080p timeline, 16 by nine. I shoot everything at 23,976. Um, most people call it 24 frames per second. That's what I recommend. That's what I do most of the time. Sequence name, we're just gonna name this test for sake of this video. And then cool, we have our timeline down here. And then for the sake of this video, I'm gonna open up a previous project with the same sequence settings. It's just gonna have some footage inside it. Okay, cool. So I have a previous vlog pulled up here with just some clips in it. So this, you're gonna drop in your 1080p clips, everything like that. You're gonna build the whole video. Cool, it's time to render it out, right? Nice face, Johnny. Wow, okay. Let's look on a prettier face. Okay, there we go. We edited the video, everything's good to go. Like I said, we drop in our 1080p clips. Actually, a couple of these are 720 clips. That's okay. So it is time to export this video. So we're gonna Command M. It's gonna pull up our export setting screen here. Uh, if you don't know how to do Command M, you actually just go to File, Export, Media. Same as Command M. There we go. Now this is the page where people get kind of overwhelmed and confused. It's okay, there's a lot of information on here. You don't need to know everything. At some point, it's probably good to go through it all and learn what everything is. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna be showing you guys this little hack. What we're gonna do is we want the format to be H.264, that's fine. We're gonna go to presets here. And usually this is what it's gonna default to. It might show up as match source or sometimes it's gonna default to YouTube 1080p because it knows that this is the 1080p timeline. For, I would say 90% of people who are rendering this out, this is what they're gonna choose. But instead of 1080p, what we're gonna do is just drop it down to YouTube 2160p, 4K Ultra HD, and then that's it. You just name whatever you want it to be right here. The rest of the settings, we don't need to dive into too much right now, and that's it. So those are really the three things you need to know. It's gonna be H.264. We're gonna pick the YouTube 4K preset, name it what you want, and then we go to export. So as you guys can see here, compared to 1080p, the, which the estimated file size is about almost two gigs, once we switch it over to 4K, it's gonna be a whole lot bigger. We're pushing over four gigs now, which is totally okay. It's obviously gonna be a lot more data and then we're just gonna go ahead and export it. 
Also, one thing I do want to note is since I vlog on a Canon EOS R, it actually records 1080p at a very high bit rate, which basically what that means is the 1080p is very high quality, so there's a lot of data in that. So basically what you're doing is when you build the 1080p timeline, you go to export it, it's basically upscaling the entire video to 4K when it exports it. So it's not true 4K, but it is gonna up the quality a little bit. And also, for some reason, YouTube these days is when you put a 1080p video on there. I don't know if they're just prioritizing 4K or they want everybody to kind of transition to 4K videos. If I export the same video, 1080p, upload it to YouTube versus doing this, uploading it as 4K, the 4K one is gonna look significantly better. Um, I think YouTube allows like a higher data or like a lower compression on 4K videos versus 1080p, but it's definitely noticeably different. And like I said, that little 4K button will pop up on the cog wheel and it kind of looks nice and people think that you are recording everything in 4K, maybe even when you're not. Also, most of the people that are watching your videos, especially on YouTube, most of the time are gonna be on a mobile device, so it's not gonna be on a huge 60 inch TV anyways. So 1080p footage is more than enough and it's definitely still sustainable in this day and age. And like I said, I have done this for every one of my vlogs so far. I plan on continuing doing it. I even have shot things in 720p and still export it at 4K and it holds up. I just don't want people to think that if your camera doesn't shoot in 4K, it's useless. Um, I think this is proof that you can really make a lot of things look good still. It's just a little hack to make it look a little bit even better. And like I said guys, today's video is just a quick little tutorial. So if you guys did like this type of video or maybe you have a suggestion on a different tip or tutorial you guys would like to see, if you guys have any other little hacks or tips that you know to make things easier, leave it in the comments below. I'll be down there responding to everybody who leaves a comment and I'd love to get a conversation going with you guys. So if you guys haven't yet, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, hit that bell to get notified next time I post a video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace guys. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I turn off the air conditioning when I record these things so the, uh, the audio sounds good, but your boy is hot, okay? I am hot for these videos. Hit that like button, okay? I'm putting a lot of effort in these. I hope you guys like them. I'm about to drain this. See you guys in the next one.